what I want to do is record a screencast about installing Chocolatey on Windows. It's a package manager. Kind of like the package managers on Linux, like AppGit, um, things of that nature, RPM packages, dev packages, all those kind of packages that you just basically go to like one repository and there's everything you need. Like the Android store. You go there and you probably are, I mean, give me a break, it's called Google Play now, right? I don't even use it anymore. I use F-Droid for 99% of the stuff. But anyway, you go to like one central place, get all your applications. In Windows, we traditionally go to the website or to some third-party website or something that has like some applications we want or whatever. Anyway, somebody decided just like in Linux and with Homebrew on Mac, they were going to do something similar for Windows, and that's called Chocolatey. So it's just a little, has a GUI program too, but mainly command line driven, where you can just do like a, it's called Choco on the, like Choco, Chocolate kind of thing. Um, or you can type out chocolate on the command line. Anyway, I'll get to it. So it's Choc, Chocolatey. And then we'll just start at the, main landing page package manager for Windows just like I was saying there's the install so if you want to install docker it just pretty much any popular open source thing is there see how easy they're showing these examples of all these things that normally you're like uninstalling updating yourself and it's kind of a pain in the butt now it's just like a simple command line to install uninstall it and it looks like from my experience you can even uninstall stuff through the regular uh, Windows program installer thing as well too so you're not like chocolatey sort of like its own thing but it just it's pretty nice it integrates well so what I did is I uninstalled like the GIMP um, which stands for the GNU Im image manipulation program it's an open source Photoshop kinda Corel draw competitor and uh, anyway it has updates from time to time just like everything else and I usually hesitate like years in between updates on that so I just decided to go ahead and install that through Chocolatey just like this version of Chromium I'm using right here um, it automatically installed a 32-bit version I normally prefer the 64-bit I don't know what the deal was but this one runs way faster than the 64-bit version I had installed and it starts like as if it was just minimized it starts really quick I can show you now but it's kinda of cheating because I just opened it but I mean BAM that used to take 10 plus seconds on the last one I don't know if I had some weird bookmarks accumulated or something anyway get back to there so we'll just go here and we'll say uh, install Windows 7, I imagine Service Pack 1 or whatever plus. Of course, administrative shell, just like if you use Python pip or anything like that, you just uh, go to your command prompt, right click it, and pick Run as Administrator. And if you're using like a Windows 8 or 10 menu, you can just type CMD and it will search it out. And then you can right click it from there and pick Run as Administrator like that. And that will get you that command prompt. Oh, that's right, it uses PowerShell scripts too, but you can use them from command. It automatically handles that gracefully because I'm one of those people that doesn't really prefer the heaviness that of PowerShell. I like the lightweight command, just fire it up and go. So, anyway, how do they recommend installing it if you're using that? So where's this command lit thing? Completely offline. Okay so like you can just copy this whole command right here and then go to your administrator command prompt and paste it in I just right click to paste it in obviously it's taking a minute that's it I've lost my patience forget this whole just kidding anyway so I installed chromium with it it's just choco install chromium there's um, I have a 
whole list somewhere around here. Oh yeah, okay. So, chrome. these are just some of the ones that caught my interest as I was going through. Chromium GIMP Inkscape, which is a vector graphics program, open source like Illustrator. OpenJDK, which is Java Development Kit. Krita, which is sort of like if you took one aspect of Photoshop and really refined that out for artists instead of photo manipulation so much. Um, that's what Krita is. Like a lot of people that use that that like Krita just love it. You know, like there's no alternative. Anyway, that Blender, Audacity, Blender's 3D rendering, um, modeling also, animation, video editing, just anything it can do. It's always doing Blender's off the hook. If you want to get into like professional futuristic quality film and animation that's probably your best bet. Audacity's open source multi-track audio editor, tons of plugins. Git, the uh, developer source code versioning control. MSYS2, which is like a lightweight, minimal, sort of like GNU Linux type of shell. Um, it's not like a Linux emulation, but it basically gives you that style of environment. It gives you the most common tools and stuff. It's really nice but there's all sorts of flavors of that you can install msys git um, there's mingw git if you're familiar with the msys mingw gcc systems like it's all there haskell which is kind of nice um, php open jdk 8 red hat build which is an open jdk 11 red hat build those are both arguably like as close to official as you can get that's basically the engineering behind um, the official releases for the most part as far as I think because I mean they just as soon as it's up and going they just hand it off to Red Hat and Red Hat does all the maintenance from there anyway you can get the op latest OpenJDK um, that would be 12 at this time I think with 13 like literally a couple weeks away at the time of this recording as well as you know 8 and 11 which are older long-term support versions you can also just search um, Choco I think it's what is it Choco search we'll go ahead and do so I already had it install what does it say if it found that installing Choco on this machine restricting write permissions creating if they don't exist you can safely ignore errors it's ready you can call it from anywhere, command line or PowerShell by typing choco. Do with a slash question mark for a list of functions. You may need to shut down and restart PowerShell and or consoles first prior to using choco. Ensuring choco commands are in the path, ensuring that's in the folder. Mine should be good, but I'll just go ahead and do that anyway. And then come over here, run as administrator on the CMD prompt. A little bit of a different color scheme for this one, so we'll do choco forward slash question mark. It's a PowerShell script, so there's that beautiful delay there, but not too bad. And then you just scroll way back up to the top, and you can see the commands. If you're familiar with like apt and all that, then you're totally familiar with these like list, find, search, which I think all three of those may be like aliases for each other, essentially doing the same thing. Um, info, install, upgrade. You can even run, I guess it's upgrade. I thought, oh, update. Reserve for future use. Looking for upgrade. Okay. Yeah, you can just do upgrade. Like, even if you're installing something fresh, if you're like, I don't know if I already installed this, you can just run an upgrade. So anyway, and then there's all that good stuff. So anyway, I need the GIMP. So I'll search it out and see if it's in here. Choco, or I can do chocolate. And then search. And then GIMP. T. four packages found so probably some related packages or something um, draw pile I think is man I just looked up what that was not sure let's see if it'll give us Oop. I'm gonna do choco 
info draw pile. Okay, draw pile. Because I couldn't remember what this does, so here we go. Summary. Dropile's free software allows multiple users to sketch on the same canvas simultaneously. That's right. That's what its deal is. So that's cool, but right now I want GIMP and it's version 2.10.12, which sounds like the most recent stable version. So I can just literally type GIMP. I don't have to specify this version number. Sometimes there'll be lots of choices, even confusingly similar ones. Look for like approved and uh, downloads cache for licensed users. Th those seem to be, and especially towards the top of the list, like those ones seem to be the more favorable ones. So we'll go ahead and do Choco. Or I'm going to do upgrade even though it's not installed. GIMP. you want to run the install script pretty much always ask me this and then I just hit A to run all of them which otherwise all it does is download the package really and doesn't really do anything so I guess if you just want the package that's one way to go about it and this is of course the alternative from instead of going to GIMP .org. must be downloading in the background, hogging up all the bandwidth. All right, so the GNU image manipulation program, good old Wilbur. This is a fantastic program in my opinion. Um, I'm not a big fan of Scribus. I haven't used it in probably at least 10 years, and I was so put off by it back then that I've just never tried it again. Love Inkscape. Not familiar with that. GIMP's pretty big, especially these days. That Haskell stack's huge. Um, most of the other stuff I was rattling off isn't too big. Here's Inkscape, it's vector drawing, just like Illustrator kind of style stuff. Does SVGs, you can just click there to download it or use Chocolatey, Choc Choco install Inkscape from the administrator prompt. All right, let's check this out again. So it probably might take a minute or three for, I imagine, for it to finish installing that. So some of the other programs that are available that I thought were cool is like OBS Studio, which is a video editing open source deal, Shotcut, an alternative or companion, whatever you want to think of it as, to OBS Studio, Python, the latest, or you can do a Python 3, and that will give you the latest Python 3, Python 2, one word, you know, Python number 2, give you the latest Python 2. Then you can do like some popular IDEs or Eclipse, NetBeans, CodeBlocks, um, Orwell Dev C++ I'm personally a fan of. Some more entertainment packages like Edutainment, Tux Typing, Centipede, Open Mahjong Java, Mahjong Java, Super Pac-Man, Tux Guitar, SNES 9X, a Super Nintendo emulator. Um, you can get 7-Zip, WinSCP, Rust, VLC, MPCHC, Media Player Classic, Home Cinema, or whatever. That, um, honestly, MPC-HC, that's for Windows, that's probably like, that's the video player you need if you're doing video editing. Just try it out. It, I use it. It's the most compatible with everything, like the frame for frame, all that kind of stuff. Like, I just haven't found anything that can touch it. VirtualBox, VirtualBox Guest Editions, Natron, Putty, Mono, Mono Develop, GTK Sharp. Xamarin Studio, Unity, Image Burn, OpenAL, DrawPile, New Basic, NU Basic. It's like a, I don't know, that was kind of a joke. I just heard of it and installed it and I was like, this is kind of junk. I'd rather use QBasic, but maybe you can get it to work. Tree Size Free. That's a really cool thing. Um, there's another program really similar to it. It goes in, I think, Disk Free something. I used to have it in here. 
like Win Winderstat or something. It's kind of like that, and they probably even have Winderstat too. But anyway, Tree Size Free. It's made by the same people that make Ultra Search. One word. Um, Ultra Search is phenomenal. This. I was actually gonna do some. Uh, this uses the uh, the MFT the file tables to search which is just like brilliant why didn't anybody think of this a long time ago so instead of like using the Windows API to go through each like however it does it I haven't even messed with it in years where it will just go through and you have to like do a function call to get this and process that information do a function call to get that and just all sorts of repetitive like redundant seeming stuff to like parse the directories in the traditional way well it, the uh, Ultra Search takes the angle of searching your file tables, which is basically like this hidden text file, so to speak, um, hidden on your drive. And whenever you're like reading a directory, the computer looks in that table to tell you what files are there. So um, basically, the operating system does, the shell does. So instead of asking the shell for each step of the way, go in and do this little tiny thing in the file table for me, come back, and then go and do this little tiny fit thing again a million times in a row, they just go and parse it like a plain text file themselves. And so I can search for something like GIMP. And it's going to go through my entire hard drive. I have a packed full half a terabyte hard drive. Almost packed full. And look at that, just instantly it's like all over the place these are all different folders it's not like I'm in like some single t subtree and it's done it's searched I think it's done it might still be parsing a little bit there's a lot of results but I could search for something really esoteric too and it would go and find that I just didn't want it to pop up too much like privacy invasive stuff or anything so I figured GIMP was a good search I should probably get out of here because one thing the catch with this is that since it's manipulating the MFT the master file table if I remember correctly if that's what that acronym stands for it um, there's sort of like this contention issue like sometimes certain things will freeze up so I'll just kind of keep ultra it hasn't ever caused any problems for me I haven't lost any information or anything like that but I pretty much usually wouldn't open it during an install like this I just do it when there's kinda of like nothing major going on in the foreground I'm not saving a file or deleting a file because that's that's really the issue right there is you don't want to have that competition for that file table but anyway that's that's like one percent of the time it's not a huge deal so anyway what this will do is it will eventually install GIMP I'm not gonna sit here forever but that's how easy it is um, did I leave off? I'll rattle off the last couple things that I didn't say that I thought might be cool programs. So there's Erlang, Vim, Emacs, MySQL, and MySQL Workbench, Total Commander, which is a cool little old school looking file explorer, the Android NDK, the Android SDK, Android Studio, Godot, spelt Go Dot, which is um, the game development environment, phenomenal, and Godot Mono, which I guess is like I don't know must be some the C sharp packages or something for it which I heard they were gonna get I had never seen them and then there's free Pascal which is really cool it's kinda like free basic or something a command line Pascal turbo Pascal ish kinda compiler Delphi compatible compiler pretty cool it has an IDE called Lazarus you can install that's a lot like Visual Basic then there's JEdit for like a lightweight notepad plus plus style editor LibreOffice Fresh, which I assume is the latest office, latest version of LibreOffice, LMMS, Linux Multimedia Studio, Node.js, Node.js-LTS, and Komodo Edit. Anyway, if you know of any other cool packages that are worth mentioning, um, if there's a comment section below on the platform you're viewing this on, please drop them in there. So what does it say? Progress 100% downloaded hashes match it's looking good the upgrade was successful one of one packages so I should be able to go here and go GIMP there it is 21012 fire that bad boy up alright thanks a lot